Yeah. How long can the Pistons' core contend in the East? This doesn't change for me, and we've had this conversation before when I've sat in that, ver in that chair right there in front of you and Uncle T. I said it, it would be in a couple years still, two to three years. You have to wait until these guys hit their prime. That's the thing. In the Cavaliers and the path they're on, it's not going to be just, you know, Cade and Jaden, by the way. I think there's a big move coming. I'm not saying it's going to be soon, but in a year from now or two years from now. It's kind of like the Cavs. The Cavs are always about a year ahead of us in terms of they found their core. They've been sucking, you know, ever since LeBron left. They've been collecting young assets and young players. And finally, this year, they realize, you know what? We have a team that can make the playoffs, but we don't want to just make the playoffs. We want to contend or at least try to contend. They go and get Donovan Mitchell. Right now, the Pistons are in that stage where they have to figure out what they have in their young core. They have to figure out what they have in, in, in well, they know what they have in Cade, but Jaden, Sadiq, um, the rest of the guys. So that's, that's the process. Now, a year from now, when you understand what you have, you can go out and, and try and trade for a guy like Donovan Mitchell. But until then, you have to figure out what you have in your young core, and that's going to take this season. I, to be honest with you, I can see next season they squeak into the play-in or the playoffs, and then the following season you just get better and better and better. But the problem is the East, they go deep. But still, it's, it starts with making a big move. I, I don't think, unless Sadiq turns into a big-time uh, you know, number three option who can average 18 points, which I think he can, but this is the season to do it. You got to evaluate these guys. And even last year, you know, the eighth seed was Atlanta, forty-three and thirty-nine. And Atlanta got tremendously better by getting DeJounte Murray. So that's the problem in the East. Even the teams that are in the back end of the playoffs are getting better. So you know, if you're a Pistons fan, you hope Cade turns into that superstar, which we know he will be. You hope Jay Nivey in about two, three years turns into that superstar, which we think he will be. Sadiq Bey, uh, I'm hoping he can be a third option. And, and Isaiah Stewart, Isaiah Livers, they turn into really, really good role players. Jalen Duran, who knows? He could be your starter in a year from now. So there's a lot that has to kind of, you know, figure itself out for the Pistons. But they're, they're, they're not too far away. I would say two to three years before you can really look them in the face and say, all right, either we got to go sign a big fish in free agency or we have to go trade for one of these marquee players that are on the market. But until then, Adam, right now, you're just figuring what you have out. And that's all. That's that's pretty much spot on. But I don't see playing, man. I don't. This year? Absolutely No, not. hell no. Uh, not even contending for it. No. Like no. legitimately contending. I, I could see them. <sighs> this is... Got, look, again, are there a few superstars that come out every five, six, seven, eight years where they are phenomenal day one, they can carry your franchise? Yeah. Happens. Happens, actually. Can K do that? I'm going to say no in year two. But what do the Pistons have that most teams in the NBA don't? They have a 10, 12-year runway, potentially, mm -hmm. with two superstar players that are under the age of 22 years old. Not many teams have that potential. And that's what the Pistons have. Patience. I always tell the story about Golden State. They draft Steph Curry. They draft Draymond. They draft Clay, And through all those years, they had four straight losing seasons. Four. It wasn't until Steph Curry's fifth year that they even sniffed the playoffs. Right. And when did he become a, quote, superstar? And I hate, I hate, I despise how easily we throw out that word for NBA players. Donovan Mitchell's a superstar. Is he? The hell he is. He's a star. Yeah, he's a star. So, but I, I leave the superstar label for the guy that, yes, can get the individual accolades, sure. But more importantly, the team aspect. What are you doing for your team? Mm -hmm. How much impact do you have? Although Luka has accomplished nothing, that's he, a superstar. He almost took them to a, yeah, that's that a superstar. Final. That's what superstars do. That's what I look at it. Like you said, we actually agree here. I, th I think a superstar is you have to be the best player on a championship contender team, and you can lead that team to the NBA Finals. And I want to ask you something, because I noticed one detail that no one's really talking about with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Go for it. They drafted Colin Sexton, eighth overall in 2018, and Cavs fans like Colin. But when that it got time to pay him, and they traded him, they flipped him for Donovan Mitchell. You don't see Cavs fans missing Colin Sexton. They, they love Donovan Mitchell. They love what they got you know, brought in to Cleveland. I want to ask you, are Pistons fans ready to lose one of these players? Because cause yeah. I'm telling you, it's going to be, and I'm not, this isn't me saying it, but I'm just being real with you guys. When that trade happens, or you maybe you sign a guy in free agency, but let's just say a trade happens. 
I think you should just say, are, I, the, I, are Pistons fans potentially ready to lose Sadiq Bey? That's, yeah, that's where I was going. I think going. that's where you're getting at. Sadiq Bey. Because if Jaden Ivey hits his potential, mm -hmm. and Cade, like we expect him to, that's one and two. The conversation should be not about Pistons fans. The conversation should be, is the owner ready to go into the luxury tax? Because you're going to have three max player contracts. Right. You are. And you're going to want to build a squad. And you like Jalen Dern. And you're going to want to keep Isaiah Stewart. Maybe. Killian Hayes, we'll see how he progresses. But this is a tricky, dicey situation. What I would say, though, to answer your question, is Pistons fans should be prepared to see half of this roster not here three years from now. That's the reality of it. And we're not being negative, but that's no, the reality. No, it's just the reality. Yeah. And you want it that way. Right. You think you're winning a, a chip in three years, four years with this team? Hell no. Will you add key veteran players out in free agency? Will you make trades at the deadline mm -hmm. to get older, more experienced going into a playoff run? Yeah, you'll do that. It's part of the game. What I love to see... Kate at one, Ivy two, Sadiq three, who can oh, really be a two any night. I would love that. That's a quote, well. big three. Absolutely. I would love it. That's a natural grown home big three. Hell, Boston has it. Mm -hmm. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart. Think whatever you want about Marcus Smart's game. He is more important than a lot of people give him credit for for that Boston team. But even the Celtics, they almost traded Brown for KD. The, the Nets just didn't want it. Would you so. trade Sadiq for KD if you were in their position? Oh, yeah. You would have done it in a heartbeat, right? right? You would have offered him in a heartbeat. You would have even considered offering Ivy if that's what it meant. That's, what, that's how the NBA works. If you have a chance to get a superstar, I mean, everything's on the table at that point. Yeah. So yeah. I think Cleveland made a good move. I think Detroit's still in a very good position. The only thing I don't like about Cleveland, and yes, Evan Mobley was pretty damn spectacular last season, is where are the shooters? Where's the shooting come from? Donovan Mitchell loves to attack the basket. Mm -hmm. Darius Garland. It's okay. I'm not saying okay skill-wise, but the, sh the shooting is okay. It's good. It's good for where he needs to be in the league. Evan Mobley's not standing at the three-point line ready to shoot most nights. A lot of his work happens in the paint. So I have questions about how they're going to fit, but I still think there's a lot of moves for Cleveland before the year starts. And for the Pistons, too, you have a guy in Cade who will be a superstar. Let's not get that twisted. But you have a guy in Cleveland and Evan Mobley who you think will be a superstar, but you still go out and trade for Donovan. Like it, it, This league, it's hard. Like Giannis, with the Bucks, one superstar, you win a championship. That That is more of an anomaly now. I mean, even the Boston Celtics, they have multiple guys you can say as stars, great players. Uh, they just fell short. So at the end of the day, I'm not saying it will happen. Hopefully Sadiq Bey is, is that guy, and he turns into that guy, which I think he will with his Abe, work Abe, aren't you a New York fan? Shut the fuck up. You and the Knicks. Huh? What? <laughs> huh? You guys couldn't get Donovan Mitchell. You couldn't get a lottery pick. You cried about Lonzo Ball. Shut the fuck up. You're a Knicks fan. I love you. But you're a Knicks fan. You can't talk here. They wanted Zion. It just, you know what? Tank for Zion! <laughs> Would you fall to like 15? They got RJ Barrett. The hell out of and here. And now they're trying to trade RJ Barrett. I like RJ Barrett. Though. Me too. But you know what? Knicks we'll see. Fans. I had to prepare the question because I, I feel like in the future, Troy's going to have to make a very tough decision. Or I agree. maybe you get lucky and you sign him in free agency. But even then, you're going to have to extend these guys. So money's got to come from somewhere. I agree.